you a moment, Gerald. Take your time, Mr. Harvey. Tonight. Oh, darling, no. Please be careful. Yes, don't worry. Enjoy Paris, Mr. Harvey. Thank you, Gerald. I'll try. All set? All set.
Are you sure he was on the plane? Yes, absolutely positive, sir. Did you actually see him get on? Yes, I did, sir. Thank you, Gerald, that's all. A rather tangled web. You appreciate my position? Oh, yes, perfectly. If, for example, the Russians found him. Don't worry, I'll make sure they don't. Now, tell me about him. Anthony James Harvey, age 45. Education? Trinity College, Cambridge. Absolutely first-rate mind. What about his war record? Good, not distinguished. Royal Air Force. Wounded in the right hip, left him with a slight limp. You can see his dossier. I'd also like to see his apartment. Oh, why? Well, it's just possible I might find something that you people missed. Would you like to go now? Yes, why not? How long has Harvey worked for you? He joined MI5 12 years ago. Is he married? No, bachelor. 45? I was. You'd say he's a good operator? One of my best. I shall miss it. It was very sexy. And your hair. My hair. I liked it. That was Anthony Harvey. <laughs> the plane was at two, maybe 3,000 feet. It blew up right in front of our eyes. So you would say then, uh, Mr. Parkinson, that in your opinion, the passengers could not have survived? Well, in my opinion, sir, the passengers are scattered at the bottom of the English Channel. Mr. Parkinson, thanks for coming. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Satisfied? No. Harvey is still alive. Well, a dozen people saw the plane blow up. But he wasn't in it, Sullivan. He wasn't. He jumped. You mean by parachute? He would hardly be alive if he jumped without one. The plane was not, repeat, not parachute equipped. Yes, only life jackets, like commercial airlines. Have you took a parachute on board with him? In this. It's a diplomatic bag. <laughs> yes, I've seen one before. He was delivering it to the Paris embassy. Harvey was 45, right? Yes. A sedentary guy, 45, with a war disability, who'd never used a parachute before in his life. Ah, we don't know that. All we know is that he served in the Royal Air Force. Well, that doesn't necessarily mean he trained in sky jumping. Hundreds, thousands of men who served never even saw a parachute, let alone strapped one on. Yes, I accept that. There's an even better reason. Harvey left the foreign office at 6.40. He got to his apartment at 7, and the chauffeur was with him all the time. Correct. Then just when, where, and how did Harvey lay his hands on a parachute? He already had one. In this. OK. Let's say Harvey is still alive. He is. And you think he's hiding out somewhere in London? Can you think of a better place? But why? What's his game? Doubtless, when you find him, he'll tell you. You can bet he will. Wait a minute. If Harvey parachuted out of that plane before it blew up, then he must have known it was going to happen. Good. And would you like another highly significant fact? <laughs> yeah, I'm just crazy about highly significant facts. When Anthony James Harvey left his apartment that night, he knew he was never going to come back. Who told you that? A little bird? No. A little square of clean wall. It is a painting of a Madonna by Bellini. I sold it to him. Yes, Miss Wexler, we already know that. Oh? Do you have? We do have our sources. You certainly have. We also know he bought it three years ago and paid you 16 pounds for it. <laughs> Your sources are sensational. We do it with mirrors. Hmm. But wrong. Oh. He paid me 1600 Did he now? By check? No. That's why I remember. He walked into my gallery with 1600 pounds in a brown paper bag. And I was fool enough to let him have it. Oh, why? Well, because it was worth double that. Well, why did you then? Have you ever been broke? It's my permanent state. <laughs> and Harvey knew it was a bargain. In fact, Harvey knew a great deal more about pictures than he let on. What else did he know about? Oh, antiques, silver, music. He knew whole operas off by heart. Well, what about his uh, 
personal habits. Well, we never got personal. Did he have any love life? Not with me. Hobbies? Um, no. No, no, he was a shy man. He kept himself to himself. He never talked much. But basically, he was terribly kind and absolutely devoted to his mother. He has a mother somewhere. Well, we all have one somewhere. Did you ever meet her? No, no, she's aged and not very well. He kept her in a nursing home, and I've no idea where. Miss Wexler, thanks very much. It's been a pleasure. Oh, perhaps you'd like to give this to your sources. My telephone number's just been changed. Thanks. You've been pleasant and very helpful. <laughs> Life's short. Perhaps one day you'll be able to do something for me. You never know. The Madonna by Bellini. Stunning, isn't it? It was one of your cardinal rules. No link with the past. This link, as you call it, happens to be worth £3,000. It's dangerous. Oh, don't be dreary, darling. I'm sorry, Anthony. I can't... Andrew. Oh, I'm sorry. I am not Anthony Harvey anymore. I am Andrew Haywood. I, I, I know. It, it just slipped out. I... Say it. Andrew Haywood. Andrew Haywood. That one simple fact is all you've got to remember. So get it into your head. It slipped out. It won't happen again. See that it doesn't. Bella. Darling, please don't be cruel to me. I can't bear it. Darling, I'm overreacting. Two years of security training or something. I've got a riddle. Try me. Well, this room, why? Why what? He must have furnished it in the dark. Why does a man as a connoisseur of pictures, antiques and silver furnish a room like this? Suddenly tasteless, it's tatty. Where does a civil servant earning 3,100 pounds a year dig up 1,600 cash for a Bellini painting? No, that is a riddle. We'll solve it. I love optimism. Where do we start? Well, you start with Mother and go right back to that memorable day 45 years ago when Anthony James Harvey first entered this world. There's no doubt about it. The man is Stuart Sullivan, and the girl is also attached to Department S. I believe her name is Annabel Hertz. Hurst. And you think they're looking for Anthony Harvey? For what other reason would they have gone to his apartment? They think he's still alive. They know he's still alive. It is the where that they do not know. My friends, not only is Anthony Harvey one of MI5's top agents, he is also a desperate threat to our entire European security network. If we find him? If? No, if, Volodyn. You will find him. And when you find him, you will kill him. I found it yesterday afternoon, washed ashore on the Kent coast. Diplomatic mail for the Paris Embassy. Mm. No 
parachute. Stuart, would it be that difficult? Would what be that difficult? Well, getting a parachute on a private charter plane without anybody knowing about it. Maybe. Maybe not. The important thing is to find out if Harvey's still alive. It's idiotic to chase around London for a man who might be dead. Couldn't agree more, but how do we prove it? Well, any line yet on his mother? No, we're checking every nursing home in England, but it's a bit of a job. Yeah. Annabelle, just where is the distinguished creator of Mark Kane? He's out buying clothes for his forthcoming lecture tour. Hey, you look like the Sultan in an old Myrna Loy harem picture. That dates you. <laughs> what are you doing here? Well, I did phone. Oh, yes. What is this interest in Anthony James Harvey? Well, I thought I explained that to you. The problem, not the involvement. Well, we're supposed to find him. Exactly. I thought we specialized in the unsolvable. Oh, I see. Well, Sir Curtis offered our services. Your services? I have to be in the States in three days. I think this is the sort of thing for a lecture tour of the Middle West, don't you? Do you know I'm going to the same places that Oscar Wilde did in 1882? Jason. And they loved him. Yes, but he did read selections from other authors. Jason, do you have any ideas? About Harvey? Hmm. Well, if he's still alive, he'll be in London. Do you like the sleeves? How do you figure that? I had Mark Kane do the same thing in Her Majesty Regrets. Do what? Fake his own death. I think it's too short. Mark Kane disappeared and took on a completely new identity. Well, you just lost me. Identities take a long time to establish. They have to be set up in the city in which they lived in. Oh, yes, I think that's much better, don't you think? Ah, yes. Now you look like, um... Myrna Loy in an old Myrna Loy movie. <laughs> We've taken the mutilating phone books now, have we? When a man changes his name, nine times out of ten, for some deep psychological reason, he sticks to the same initials. I'd change my name from Stuart Sullivan to, say, uh, Sam Smith. Now, you'd change your name from Annabelle Hurst to, uh... Alice Holmes. You get the point. So, for a start, I want a list of everybody in the London directories whose first name begins with A for Anthony, and whose last name begins with H for Harvey. Program the computer and introduce variables of employment. Such as? Well, eliminate aircraft mechanics, boilermakers, doctors, engineers. Do I need to spell it out? No, I get the point. It'll be some list. Well, that's what computers are for. It is a simple computer job based on A for Anthony and H for Harvey. This is the course of the plane. What's his name? Harvey jumps somewhere along this line between Gatwick and Hastings. I get back to the same question. Where did he get that parachute? Mr. King, I know there wasn't a parachute on that plane. How do you know? Well, I was doing a 10,000 hour service. Uh, no, uh, please, uh, continue. Well, so uh, I was working on the plane right up until the pilot came on board. There's no way he could have... No, no, there isn't. We didn't even have a suitcase, and I went over every inch of that plane. Definitely no parachute. And if there was, he wouldn't have jumped. Why not? 45, a wartime disability, never jumped before in his life. What utter rubbish. I've got a 60-year-old aunt in Kent who never stops jumping. Open the door. You open it. Heights bother me. Don't wait lunch. I'll drop in on my aunt in Kent. What are they doing?
Who are you? Oh, is that you, Stuart? <laughs> yeah. Well, what's so funny? <laughs> Get me down. <laughs> Stuart, where are you? <laughs> Get me down. Harvey jumped over approximately the same place as I did. How do you make that up? He would have avoided all towns and villages and any populated area and picked the safest point. So he could land in a tree, you mean? Somewhere. What was that? In this area, you'll find the parachute. Under any one of a million haystacks or in any one of a million barns? No, 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 in the woods. No, forget the open fields. Harvey would never have wanted it to be found, ever. So he dug a hole in a secluded spot and buried it. Try. Get me Major Ken Watson of the Royal Army Ordnance Survey. Yes, you'll find him at the Ordnance Sub-Depot, Aldershot. Right, lads, gather round. Now we'll start searching in this area. I want you to spread out all over that way. Right, come on. Jump to it. Well, you look cheerful. I found his mother. Oh, where? At the Lucy Williams home for aged gentlewomen, Edenbridge, Kent. So what are you waiting for? For you to say goodbye. Goodbye. She's on to something. Armies hurts. Hurts. We should have guessed you was going to see the mother. I never guess. What I should miss most desperately about Anthony is his kindness. Did you know he came down every weekend? Yes, he told me. And always with some little gift. A book, chocolates, or flowers. The last time he came, he brought me this. It's lovely. He told me it was very valuable. I never dreamt that he would die before I did. Do you like it here? Oh, very much. They're terribly kind, and it's not too expensive. <laughs> they always went to so much trouble over Anthony's meals. Anthony stayed here too? Stayed? When he came for the weekend? Oh, no, he never stayed a whole weekend, dear. I... I... Oh, no. He came down every Friday and had dinner with me, and then he went back to London. Harvey only saw his mother Fridays for dinner. That's right. My theory exactly. He came back to London as somebody else. Another identity. What else did she say? She's read one of your books. One of them? Mm-hmm. And did she, uh... She said it showed warm promise. I'll send the rest of them to her. Sullivan. Oh, that's great, Major. Yes, yes, thanks very much for your help. Yes, I will. Goodbye. They found the parachute. That proves that Harvey is still alive. Mm. Where is it? It's in Major Watson's office. I'll examine it first thing in the morning. Annabel, was there anything else for Mrs. Harvey? Yes. She's sweet, and I'm ashamed to say I stole this. It was Harvey's last gift to her before he died. May I? Mm. 
And it's old. Valuable. And traceable. Jason, why do you think I stole it? Well, that's your first job in the morning. Now, if there's nothing else, I think we can go. There is. Oh? Mrs. Harvey was very worried about Anthony at Cambridge. What was it? Drink? Girls? Boys? Marxism. What did you say? Her exact words were, Anthony was never a communist, I'm sure. He was a moth fluttering around an exciting candle, but never a part of the candle itself. We've got it. Anthony James Harvey is a double agent. Do you know what we grossed today? How much? Counting the ebony table, 700 pounds. I have an intuitive feel about money. Have you? Yes, money is frightened. So are the people who own it. Frightened of what? Losing it. That's why they sink every penny they can into things that will appreciate. Paintings and fine antiques. I understand these things. In a few years, we'll be rich. That's wonderful. You do manage to control your joy. I'm frightened that our luck won't hold. There's no such thing as luck. Isn't there? A man's destiny is shaped by his character. I know. And I admire you enormously for having planned all this, but... Well, there's something you didn't anticipate. What? The fear afterwards. Just plain stupid. Well, I'm just a plain stupid woman. May, please. We've planned this for ten years. Did you plan Sir Harv's defection? How could I? Could anyone have anticipated it? No. But that doesn't help me. I dream. Henry Smith is a very clever man. He's a fool. Oh, Andrew, don't be ridiculous. Fools don't become head of the MI5. Well, since when has high office become a guarantee of intelligence? You are being ridiculous. Look, half the civil servants in this country can get jobs as office boys in private industry. Smith is a terribly clever, totally ruthless man. Well, what if he is? He knows you're a double agent. Harvey? A double agent? My dear chap. He isn't a double agent. Well, Smith says he isn't, and Smith ought to know. What about the parachute? Oh, yes. Made by the Overstrand Parachute Manufacturing Company, Leeds, Yorkshire. Shoot number AX72408, sold to a sky jumping club in Croydon. There are 162 members, of whom four have the initials A.H. Alec Haberfield, Alfred Hadlow, Austin Hewlett, Andrew Haywood. Is there someone there who could get me the computer data on the A.H. syndrome? Mind you, you'll be in a bit of a mess if Anthony Harvey changes his name to Joel Zumafuntz. Now, the A.H. initials are sound psychologically. Uh, yes, bring him in, please. Talking of A.H., what has happened to the female of that species? She's checking out the snuff box. I follow her to four silversmiths. Four silversmiths? Oh, Volodya, this is most significant. Uh, do not lose her. Right. Progress? I think so. I will spin you the little story. Yesterday, Miss Hurst, she visit the mama. Today, she visit four silversmiths. Why? I can't find the connection. No? Think. Anthony James Harvey is a good son. He knows he will never see the poor old mamushka again. So, he makes her the little gift. Ah. Something small, obviously made of silver, and valuable. Just in case when he's dead, the poor old mamushka needs money. And what's valuable is traceable. Precisely. Miss Hurst, who is a trained agent, she steals it. Or to be more charitable, we may say she uh, borrows it. 
and to find out where Harvey got it. Always, Karnak, always when you move from an old life to a new, always there is an overlap. Somewhere there is a connecting link. And that will lead us to Mr. Harvey, or whatever he calls himself now. Bring in the computer data. Lost her. Poor Ravoy, you stupid idiot. But it's not my fault. But of course it is. Good afternoon. Can I help you? Oh, actually, I've got something to sell. Well, we'd be happy to have a look at it. I understand. It's rather special. It's lovely. Gerard Hander, around 1720, I think. Would you mind waiting for a moment? I'd rather like my husband to have a look at it. Of course. What's the matter with you? I thought I recognized it. Where did you? A girl wants to sell it. Is she waiting? Hmm. Where did she? It's just another of those links that you don't seem to think are important. It's not. It's not the same one I gave to Mother. Andrew, Handar made three of those snuff boxes a couple of hundred years ago. Three in the whole world. I know. Your mother has one. The odds against another one turning up in this antique store by coincidence are astronomical. I mean, out of all the thousands of antique stores in London, why here? I... I just can't believe it. Yes, well, one thing's sure. What's that? You've got to buy it. Yes, I will. And at a legitimate price. Don't try to be funny. Good afternoon. Are you, uh, Mr. Haywood? Yes, I am. And you are? Miss Hurst. Well, Miss Hurst, this really is charming. Yes, it is. May I ask where you got it? Belonged to my aunt. She died recently, and, well, uh, I certainly don't have any use for a snuff box. <laughs> and you'd like to sell it? Well, to be honest, I'm, I'm not quite sure. Could do with the polishing, couldn't it? I do like things that are shiny. You're not sure? Depends on what you'd pay. A thousand guineas. That sounds more than fair. Then we've got a deal. On the other hand, my Auntie Doris was such a sweetie, I sort of hate to part with it. I might go higher. I tell you what, Mr. Haywood. 
Let me sleep on it. So the last silversmith remembered seeing it at an auction in Sotheby's. And Sotheby's blessed their art to keep records. It was sold to a shop on Sloane Street. So long I went and guess what I saw? Must we play games? The Bellini painting. Are you sure? I remembered it from the reproduction that we looked at. Oh, do get on with it, dear. I've still got a lot to do. <laughs> well, a man and his wife own the shop. Are you ready for the crunch? I thought it would never come. The name of the shop is Andrew Haywood Antiques. We've got it. I think so. Andrew Haywood is on the computer data. And there's an Andrew Haywood at the Sky Jumping Club in Croydon. Right. I'd better call Smith. Before you get MI5. Yes? If Haywood's our man, he's certainly changed. Changed? He's partially bald, no moustache, and very definitely no limp. Why don't we go take a look? That won't be necessary. I got his fingerprints on the snuff box. They're being checked against his records at MI5 now. What I want to find out is what he's up to. I confess to a certain languid interest myself. A complete change of identity. It must have taken years to set up. Why? Stuart? Yes? Suppose MI5 wanted Harvey to appear dead because they were setting up a whole new cover for him. Then why call us in? Well, to test the cover. See if we could break it. You mean they blew up that plane, sacrificed the pilot? Well, he could have jumped out, too. They're both hiding somewhere? Oh, it's very complicated. Sullivan. Would you repeat that, sir? Uh, thank you. Smith says the fingerprints don't match. So Andrew Haywood isn't Anthony Harvey. Gentlemen, the whole business is a question of patience. Sooner or later, Department S will lead us to Harvey. All we have to do is to wait. Sergei Kirov, who are you? Does it matter? I'm telling you a simple fact. Anthony James Harvey is running a store on Sloan Street. It's called Andrew Haywood Antiques. Prints or no prints, Anthony Harvey is Andrew Haywood. So you do think Smith's mistaken? Well, Haywood has the Bellini. Haywood came up on the computer. He came up on the Sky Jumping Club. Every time we turn around, who do we find? Haywood. Your orders were to find him, identify him beyond question, and then leave him alone, right? So? There's nothing to prevent us dropping in on him for a cosy little chat. Is there? Nothing in the whole wide world. Get out there. What is it? It's those three men. Stall them. Well, what is the matter? They're Russian agents. Stall them. Harvey has visitors. Oh. <laughs> Be 
Seguin's a Russian agent. I've seen him before. They're after him. How can you be sure? I'm not. It's a guess. But where else has he got to run to? Jason, cover the back. Annabelle, stay here. Almost is over. Harvey, listen. Stay where you are. Any nearer, and I'll jump. Be reasonable. I promise I'll do all I can to help. You can't. The British will give me life imprisonment, and the Russians will shoot me. Either way, I lose. The vultures! Our gathering! Harvey, I want to help you. Here we are. Okay. So it's a standoff. If you rush me, I'll jump. All right. And I can wait longer than you can. Keep the suicide talking. It's your responsibility, isn't it? Yeah. Would you like a cigarette? Oh, no. Well, I'll throw it to you. No. Listen. When did all this start? Are you a special branch? No, my name is Solomon, Department S. When did all this start? In Berlin. Years ago. The, the Russians asked me to work for them. And you agreed? I planned it. Sell anything to the highest bidder, is that it? Why not? I'm a huckster. You must have taken unbelievable risks. <laughs> calculated risks. It's fools. Look at them. We've lost him. He's going to jump. Anthony Harvey began to disappear right in front of them. But I kept him alive with a wig when my head proceeded. And when his war wound recovered, I kept his limp. You faked a limp for 10 years. I kept a nail in my shoe to remind me. It must have been very painful. Pain's nothing. I can stand any kind of... I can stand pain. Sure you can. No, don't rush me. I mean you, Sullivan, don't rush me. I don't want to. I'm interested. I'm full of admiration for what you've done. Weekdays, you are Anthony Harvey with hair and a limp. Weekends, Andrew Haywood with neither. It was a perfect plan. It sure was. You got away with it for years. Now I'm 45, and now it's... Saharov. Our chief Russian contact defected to the British in Paris. So Saharov spoiled everything, huh? I couldn't anticipate that. Was that why Smith sent you to Paris? Of course. The chauffeur had a loaded gun to make sure that I got on the plane. I had have been arrested in Paris. I had to get off that plane. How did you get the parachute? I bought it. I gave Hallam the mechanic 500 pounds to put it on board. 500 pounds? Money. <laughs> Everything's easy with money. I had plenty. Fortune from the Russians. But money's frightened. The people who have money are... No! Money is frightened. No! Please! Don't come any nearer. I'm not ready. I don't want you to jump, Harvey. I want to help you. You don't need to jump. I do. 
I have to. Harvey, wait! Jason, can't we do something? Such as what? Harvey, when you took that bomb on the plane, didn't it bother you about the pilot? Oh, yes, it did. And the people he left behind? No. His wife, his kids? I, I didn't know. I guess you didn't. You don't have kids, do you? I told the pilot I was on a mission. He thought the jump was official. I planned everything. And this? Did you plan this as well? Is this the way it's got to end? There's no alternative. I couldn't anticipate. We got your fingerprints on that snuff box. And when we gave them to Smith, he said they didn't match the set in your records. It must have. Smith says no. Smith's a fool. Maybe. And maybe he doesn't want you arrested. There'd be a security scandal in Parliament. Should be. They should kick him out. Maybe they would. Maybe that's why he'd much prefer to have the Russians shoot you or to have you jump. It adds up to the same thing. Adds up to what? Smith gets off the hook. No scandal. A couple of lines at a back page. Civil servant blows and jumps off roof. End of quote. Is that what you want, Harvey? Smith's a fool. I... I've got to help you. He wants you dead. At your own hands or at the hands of the Russians, it doesn't matter to him. But you don't have to jump. And the Russians can't kill you if we have you. I've got to help you. 